begin today the Gemara on Daf Kuvav Amit Beis, bottom of the page, the last line of the page. The Gemara brings what it said in the Mishnah, Mi Shaholach Medina Sayam. What happens if a person goes overseas, and then his wife comes and says, "Feed me. I have nothing to eat. My husband didn't leave anything for me." So the Mishnah there brought a machlokes between Chanon and Admain, I believe it was. Yeah whether she has to make a shvua before she'll get fed to say that she doesn't have anything or not or we just feed her okay so the mother will bring the mishnah back soon but first it brings a machlaikis here between rab and shmuel and then it will bring the mishnah regarding this machlaikis so itmer we learned the following machlaikis rab wama rab says poiskin mizayin is leishasish and Aisha says that her husband went overseas and she says they have nothing to eat, so the Bezim will go down to the properties of the husband and will allow her to sell to be able to feed herself. Shmuel says, We do not give Mizainis for an Aisha As the Gemara will soon explain the reason for Shmuel. So Shmuel says, Abba. Abba, which is the name of Rav, he agrees to me. The first three months that the husband left out of town, that we're not going to feed her. Because we have, we have the following svarah, A person would not leave his house empty, and his wife should say right in the beginning, as soon as he left, or in the first three months, that I have nothing to eat. Probably she has something available in the, within the first three months. Okay, but... So the, the, the machlaikis here is when it comes beyond three months, at this point, do we allow her to go and sell the properties? The Bezim will sell the properties for her to be able to collect for herself Muzainis. Now the Gemara says another point. If they heard, and this probably means with Adam, that the husband that went overseas passed away. So in such a case, nobody would argue as well that we go down and we give her the, the money that she wants for, for to be fed. And Rashi, Rashi explains, based on the continuation of the Gemara, that there's nothing to be concerned about over here to, to feed her. Let, let's first see the continuation, I'll come back and I'll explain this. Keep pligi, when is there an argument whether the Bezim will come and feed her or not? They did not hear, no Adam come and tell us that the husband passed away. So, if all we know, he's still alive. And now the question is, will the Bezim come and feed her or not? Rav Amar. When he traveled, he died or he just died? He went overseas and then Aiden came to tell us. Still three months. Even, even within the three months, though. I believe the Pshat Nagamara is even within in three months. Maybe you're right. Maybe even Shama Bashame is within three months. Uh, within three months, they still won't give her because the person left things in his house. Could be. Aiden, again, like I said, I believe the Pshat and the Gemara, Shama means with Aiden. So, the Gemara. Now, the argument is when they did not hear that he died. Rav Amar Paiskin, so Rav says that the Bezdin will give food for her from the properties of the husband, the because that's his obligation, to feed his wife. And if he leaves out of town and she says he didn't leave me anything, so we have to give her. And then the Mepharshim explained what this means is, what if the husband would be here? And the husband would say regarding the future that I already gave you the, the money that you need for the next month of, of, of for food, for this upcoming month. Would we trust the husband? And she says, no, he never gave me anything. I have nothing. Of course we wouldn't trust the husband for the future. So the same thing over here. Not that the husband is out of town. And she says, my husband didn't leave me food for the future. So we're going to trust her. There's no reason to say not. Mm -hmm. Just like if you would have been here, we wouldn't uh, trust him to say for the future. We're not going to trust her now either or have any suspicions either. And we're going to feed her. Shmuel Shmuel says, "Ain't paiskin. We will not give her food from the right from the husband's properties. Uh, so not my timer. Uh, what's the reason for this? So uh, Mar brings two opinions. Rav Zvid, Rav Zvid says, "Ain't Because if the husband goes out of town, it's not the same like if he's here and he's arguing that I put it, I gave her already food food for the future. If he's going out of town, so then it's very possible that he put aside a bundle of money for her." So he gave her a bundle of money that she could uh, that she could use for herself for the food. A person's going out of town, so he will give for the future. And our papa says, our papa says it's possible that he told his wife. We learned about this before in the Gemara that usually, in exchange for this, that the husband feeds his wife, her income goes to the husband. 
But the husband could say to her that you keep your income for yourself and feed yourself. You have enough money to feed yourself and I will keep my money for myself. So it's possible before he left out of town, he said this to his wife and therefore we can't, uh, we can't go down to his properties to feed her. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Rashi explains that before in the Gemara when it said that if the husband died, so then everybody agrees that we will feed her is because both of these opinions that are mentioned there, there's no reason to be concerned. Once we heard that the husband died, she has the right to go and collect the ksuba. So in such a case, we're not chayshish, not fetzrari, she has the right to collect. Once her husband died, for, for collecting the ksuba, there's no concern that maybe this tzrari, and so if she can collect the ksuba, she has the right also to go ahead and collect mezainis. She could be fed, which is part of the condition of the ksuba, to be fed after the husband passes away. Or even tzimai siyadach mezainis sayach. That's only shayach if the husband is alive. So then there's a deal between her and her husband that I work and, and you feed me. But once the, if, if we heard the husband died, so then for sure she has the right to be able to go and collect her, 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 her mezainis. Okay. So we have these two opinions over here. What is the explanation? Why? Sh what is it that we're concerned about if the husband went out of town? Why we would not want to feed her? What so the Gemara now brings. What does the say in a case where the wife doesn't go to work? Let's see right now. My benayu. So what would be the difference between these two opinions? There, Rav Papa and Rav Zvid. Ikibenayu. The difference would be gedayla. What if this she is already a gedayla? And v'loy safka. But the work that she works is not enough to support herself for food. Or maybe even she's not working at all. Or Rashi says maybe it's a time of a hunger and therefore even her work will not be and she doesn't have enough food or maybe she doesn't work at all, like he said. So in such a case, according to Rav Papa, we can't say that maybe the husband told her, keep your income. She doesn't have enough income. So in such a case, what Shmuel says wouldn't apply. Shmuel would agree that we feed her. But on the other hand, she's a G'dayla. And if she's a G'dayla, so it is very possible, like Rav Zavid said, that the husband gave her a bundle of money or left her a bank account to be able to feed herself. Inami, or we could say a difference between Rav Zayd and Rav Zayd and Rav Papa in the reverse. Katana, Visafka. If she's a Katana, she's young. And if she's young, it's not so likely that the husband would leave with her a bundle of money. He doesn't trust her. She's young. So in such a case, uh, according to Rav Zvid, Shmuel would agree that we do feed her. But on the other hand, Safka, but maybe she has some kind of a position, some kind of job, and she has income that is enough to feed herself. And therefore, According to Rav Papa, uh, Rav Shmuel would still say that we don't have to feed her. So we have here the, these not enough minutes between the two opinions according to Shmuel. Now let's go back and see what it said in the Mishnah. This is going back to the Mishnah in the beginning of this Patek. So Tanan, the Mishnah said there, Mishalach Lamedina Sayyam. Person traveled overseas, and the wife comes and demands from the Bezden, I need to get fed. Give me from the properties of my husband. Chonan Amar Chonan says, Tishba Besoiv. So Masaif means that if she's coming in the end, meaning that the husband died and now she wants to collect her ksuba, so for that she's going to have to swear before she collects her ksuba. But she's not, she's going to have to swear that uh, she didn't, that the husband didn't leave her anything, that she didn't get her ksuba already in the lifetime of the husband from before. But in the beginning, and beginning means if she wants to collect mezainis. And right now the Gemara understands that that means that the husband is still alive. And she's coming and asking for mezainis even though he's alive. But I don't have anything to eat. So for that, we're going to give her. And she doesn't have to swear that the husband didn't leave anything with her. Chonan Oma Chonan says, Tishba B'Saif. Sorry, sorry, just, did I just read that? I just read that now. Nechluku Olav B'nei Kainim G'daylem. The B'nei Kainim G'daylem argued with Chanan V'Omru and they said Tishba B'tchilu B'saif. Whether she's coming to collect her Ksuba, because her husband died, whether she's coming before to collect her Mzainis, either way she has to swear before she takes anything from her husband's properties. No, says the Gemara, this is a question on Shmuel. At can pligi elin yishvua. The argument between Chanan and the Bnei Kainim Gedalim is whether she has to swear before she collects the Mezainis. Avo Mezaini yavin Allah. But either way, they both agree that if she says, I have nothing to eat, the Bezdan will go and sell the husband's properties to feed her. So the Gemara answers, Tirgim Shmuel. Shmuel explained this Mishnah. V'shishamu b'shamei. So when it says here in the Mishnah that she's collecting Mezaynes, so just like the Ksuba that it speaks about, regarding Basayif, means that the husband died and therefore she's collecting the Ksuba, the Mezaynes is also, she's collecting it because she heard that the husband died. One of the conditions of the Ksuba after the husband dies in Almana is that she gets fed. If she doesn't want to take the Ksuba, if she takes the Ksuba, she doesn't get fed anymore. But if she doesn't want to take the Ksuba yet, until she collects the Ksuba, she gets Mezaynes. And that's what it's speaking about. 
about the difference between Tchila and Saif is Tchila is the Mezayinus and Saif is the Ksuba, but both of them is the husband died. The Gemara brings another Brais. The Gemara here is going to bring a bunch of different Braises, all, all pretty similar and all coming basically, some of them coming to the same answer here. Let's see. So Tashama, there's another Braise that says, Mishalach Lemedina Sayyam, person's w- a husband, or a, a wife's husband, she went, he, he went overseas. And now the wife is coming and demanding, give me food. So as we quoted before in the Mishnah, the Bnei Kairin Gdelem say that before she takes any food, she has to swear. Chananan says, She does not have to swear. Now, If the husband comes and says that I gave her Mazainis, I, I, I gave her food for this, I gave her money for this, Neman, he'll be believed. So the question is, over here we see that there's an argument, whether we're going to make a swear before she collects Mazainis, and what does this Braisa clearly say? If the husband will come, if she then took Mazainis from his properties, and then the husband comes and argues and say, wait a minute, why did you take from me? I, I, I put aside for money, I gave her money. The husband will be believed. But he's with his ayam, he's not here. Now he's coming back though. Mm-hmm. But he came back, he came back home, and he said, why did she take from my money? I wanted to pay me back, because I had given her money. Mm-hmm. So like Gemara says, Chachanami, this Braisa as well, we're going to explain that the reason why we're giving her Mizaynes is because Adam came and said that he died. But how could you say that answer here? The Braisa clearly says that the husband came and said, so he's back, he's here, he's alive, he's not dead. So this Braisa is speaking about that even when the husband is alive, we give her Mizaynes. Answers the Gemara, no, we could still say, What happened is, Adam came and told us that the husband died. And therefore we gave him a Zionist. But now the husband shows up. He is alive. Turns out that it's not true. He's here. And he comes and says that I already put aside for him a Zionist. I wanted to pay me back. We'll believe him. <laughs> she took the money. Toshima. So the mother brings a third bit. I said. Similar. A person went overseas. Vishra Tevas Mazainis. The wife is demanding, feed me. Now, Im Ba, so there's two girsas here in the Gemara. Let's go with the girsa of Im. Im Ba Va Omar. The husband comes and says that take your income. Instead of, instead of me feeding you, take your income and feed yourself. And, and so therefore you can take care of yourself. Rashoi, he's allowed to say this. That's right, so according to this girsa. Im Ba Va Omar. The husband comes now and says, Right, so the husband is saying to her that you went and you took from my, from my money or you borrowed money on my account. Let's say she went and she borrowed money and she says to the husband, listen, you're out of town for a year. I borrowed money. You go and pay back all these creditors that I owe money to. So the husband says, I'm not paying back. You have your own income. Take care of those loans you own yourself with your own income. That's Taisus' Pshat in the Gemara. According to other Rishayim, you read it, V'im Amar, the husband comes and says, I made this deal with you when I left. Didn't I tell you when I left that you're going to feed yourself with your own income? All right, so again, either the pshat is that the husband is saying we made this deal already in advance, or according to Teisvis, he comes and tells her now. She wants him to pay up all the money she owes for her food. She, the husband says now, you go pay back from your income. Rashai is allowed to say this. However, Kodmu Bezde and Opasku, if the Bezdin, she didn't borrow money, but Bezdin went and took money from his properties and gave her food. So then Masha Pasku Pasku, what they already took from his properties and fed her is already given and then she doesn't have to give that back. So the question is, over here we see the husband came. So if the husband came, that means he's alive. And even when the husband's alive and he's out of town, we see that we feed her, not like Shmuel said. And says, here as well, we're going to have to say the case according to Shmuel is, we heard he died. And then as we see now, it turns out that it's not true, that he is alive and he came. Like we said before in the previous B'raisa. Oh yeah, if, well, in the case where she borrowed money and the husband says, didn't I tell you? Or um, he says, pay from your own income, she'll have to pay back. Toshima. Another Braith said, says, Mishalach Lamedina Sayyam, a person went overseas. Ve'ishtay Tevas Mazainis, and she's demanding, feed me. Bezdin, Yerdin Lunach Chasav, Vizanin, Mepharnas on the Ishtay. Bezdin goes down to the properties and they feed her, and the Mepharnas are. Mepharnas means also whatever else she needs, clothing and so on. Avaloi Bonov, yeah, Avaloi Bonov Ubnaisov. But this Braith adds another detail here. The Bezdin will not go down to the properties to feed the sons and the daughters. And then it says, And there's something else also that the Bezan will not give her, which the Gemara will soon spell out what this means. Now over here, because it says that we don't feed the son and the daughters, 
this itself is a proof that the husband is still alive. Because if you remember, we learned earlier in the Masechte, when the husband, when a father is still alive, he doesn't have an obligation to feed his son and daughters. If this Braisa would be speaking about a case where the father passed away, so one of the conditions of the Ksuba is that he has to feed the sons and the daughters. Or maybe even besides that, forget about the condition of the Ksuba. First of all, the sons inherit the properties and the daughters get fed. So why is it saying of Yerav Eloi Bonov of Noisov? Elamite, from the Bryce itself, it seems like the father is still alive. And we say that the wife, he has an obligation to feed her, but not the sons and the daughters. So we see here, not like Shmuel. Amr Rav Sheishe, so the Gemara answers, the Bryce in this case is, Bemashre es ishtoi al yidei shlish. What happened over here is, that this husband, before he left town, he appointed a shlish, a, a third guy, in other words, a caretaker, a manager, that he's going to feed the wife. And what happened? One day this caretaker says, I'm done, I'm finished with this job, I'm not taking care of you anymore. So in such a case, for sure, there's no reason to be concerned to what we mentioned before, according to Shmuel, that maybe the husband put aside a bundle of money for her, or maybe the husband said, you feed yourself with your own income. Look, he appointed a person, and now this person backed out. So for sure, even Shmuel would agree that she gets fed. So for the sons and daughters, we should say the same thing, that they should be fed as well. Answers the Gemara. In other words, if he appointed a shlish, he appointed somebody. So he appointed for the, for the uh, wife, for the sons and for the daughters. So if he appointed someone, so why should they uh, not be fed if this guy backed out? That's a good question. That's a very good question. Maybe uh, let's, let's see. Just, just see. Let's see a moment over here. So the Gemara says, "Kishehisher lezu v'loy hisher lezu." That the case over here is that he appointed an apotropis to feed his wife, but he did not appoint an apotropis to feed the sons and the daughters. Frak the Gemara, my paske. Why are you? Uh, why are you making this distinction? That saying that he appointed for the uh, an apotropis for the wife and not for the sons and daughters. Why? Why? Maybe he appointed. Why shouldn't we say that he appointed for both? So Tesis asks you a question. That what do you mean by paske? The reason is because for the wife he has an obligation to feed her. That's why he appointed an apotropis. But for the sons and daughters he does not have an obligation. So that's why he did not appoint. But so what, so what father would not provide for him? You're right. Okay, it's true. But still. If he doesn't have a legal obligation or a halacha de obligation, so then the Gemara can't ask such a question. My paska. It's because he doesn't have that obligation. Taisus changes the shot in the whole Gemara here. I'm not going to have time to go through the Taisus now, but Taisus asks this question. The last Taisus on the page here. El Omer of Papas, Rav Papa gives a different shot. Kishishamu Bai Shemais. We're going to have to say regarding this Brais as well that we heard that the husband died, but different than what we said before. Over here, the case is Kishishamu Bai Shemais Be'eid Echad. We heard only one eight came and said that the father, that the father, the husband died. So therefore, there's a distinction between the wife and the sons and daughters. Why is that? He, when it comes to her herself, what's the Allah regarding a woman if one eight says her husband died? The Ibais and Suvi Beidechad Mansim Minseve, if she wants to get remarried now. Based on the words of the Sayyid Echad, she's allowed to get remarried, as we learned about this in the Gemara and Yavamis. So therefore, Mizayin and Ami Avin Allah. So therefore, we trust the Sayyid Echad that she can get remarried. So the father died, the husband died, so we give her also Mizayinus as well. After the father died, as we said before, after he died, even Shmuel agrees that we give her. But when it comes to the sons and daughters, we're not going to say that they're going to inherit or they're going to get fed because we know the father died. If they want to go and say, oh, we inherit this person's, our father's property, we can't rely on Eid Echad for that purpose. So therefore we don't feed them either. That's the, the, the case of this Braise. Now the Gemara goes back to explain one detail here. My Dovach said in the Braisa, we don't give her something else. What is this something else that we don't give her? Rav Chista says it refers to Tachshet, literally means an adornment, but it means it perfumes that the wife would get from her husband. We don't give her that. Rav Yasef says that Tzedakah, there are different Tzedakahs that you collect from the people in the city, that you don't take from her, this money from her, that, that she should give her money, that she should be able to participate in giving Tzedakah. So the Gemara explains, the one that says that we don't give her money for her tachshit, for her perfume, that's even for herself. Definitely we don't give her extra money to be able to give tzedakah, which is for others. The one that says that we don't give her the money that she should be able to give for tzedakah, but tachshit, what she needs for herself, for her own perfumes, that we do give her. Because a person does not want that her, his wife should be ugly or disgusting, that she should not have the perfumes that she needs. Tashama, the Gemara brings another Braise going back again to this Machlaikis here between Rav and Shmuel, whether we give the wife to be fed from the husband's properties if he left out of town. 
So here the Braise says as follows, Hayyuvame, Yuvame, her husband died, and there's no children, now she has to get married to the brother. So she did not yet get married to the brother. Gimel Chadashim in the first three months. The first three months, if you remember, we learned in Yuvame, she's not allowed to get married yet. You have to wait three months to know if a child is born, who the child is. So those three months when she's waiting, Nizayin is Mishal Baila. She still gets fed from her husband's properties. Just like the halacha of any wife, any almana, that she gets fed from her husband's properties. This Yavama, even though she's getting married to this Yavam, but she can't yet. So at this point, she gets fed from her husband's properties. After three months, she doesn't get fed from her husband's properties anymore because now she should be getting married to this Yavam. She, she belongs to this Yavam. And Valay Mishal Yavam, but on the other hand, she can't get fed from the Yavam either because she didn't marry him yet. He doesn't have yet an obligation to feed her. Now, Omad Bedin, what if she brought him to Bezdin and she says to him, listen, either marry me or give me Chalitza or let me go. And so they were already at a Din Tairi. She made that demand already. And now Barach, this brother, this Yavam, picks himself up and runs away. Nizayin is Mishal Yavam. So from that point forward, she gets fed from the Yavam. So what do we see over here? That this person went out of town. What does the Bezin do? Bezin takes from the properties that he owns and feeds her. So if we say this regarding a Yavam, we should say this regarding any husband that goes out of town and that we, we don't see that he left any money for her. We should, uh, we should say that she gets fed from his properties as well. So this is a question of what Shmuel said. Amalach Shmuel, so Shmuel says, no, you can't prove from this case. By the Yavam, it's different. In this case, what should we be concerned of? Lahai, and for this woman here, Imishum Tsrari, is it what we said before that we're concerned that maybe the husband left a bundle of money for her? This Yavam is not so close to her that we're concerned that the Yavam left a bundle of money for his Yavam. They're not even married yet, Bukhlao. Imishum is it that maybe this Yavam that left out of town made a deal with her that you feed yourself with your income and I'm not going to feed you, but Le Mishtab that, that, at that point, the Yavam is not even obligated to give her Mizaynis yet, and she's not giving him the income, so therefore at, at this point, there's no reason to be concerned about any of this. Okay, but that says that Rashi in, in Yavam says, Taisus says, and Arichas about this, that the reason Taka why we obligate this Yavam to feed her if he ran away is it's, it's really just a knas. The whole thing is a knas because he was supposed to either marry or give her a chalitza and now he just ran away so there's a knas that he's going to have to feed her. The Gemara's question was that if Shmuel was right that we never force a husband to feed a wife when he leaves out of town, the Bezin wouldn't, wouldn't impose such a kind of a knas. And the Gemara says, no, we do impose this knas because over here in this case, the usual concerns that we have in a case where a husband leaves out of town, that he left her money or that he told her, you feed yourself with your own income, don't apply here. Toshima, another ayah the Gemara brings. It doesn't matter how long. It doesn't say here. I, I don't see any, any limitation of time. Another ayah the Gemara says, What happens if she went together with her husband overseas? And now, boss of Amra, she comes back and says, My husband died. So, so we trust her. Right? If she says her husband died, she can go and get remarried. And if she wants, she can get fed. From his properties and Ratsasa Goivik Subasa. If she wants, she can collect the Ksuba. Once she collects the Ksuba, she does not get fed anymore. What's if what's if she said, Geshani Baili? She said, My husband divorced me. So then Miss Parnesas Vahileches at Kidei Ksubasa. She will get fed until the amount of the Ksuba. Until the amount of the Ksuba, we basically say, Maman of Shach, she has the right to collect this amount of money. If the husband is still did not divorce her. Right? Even though usually we don't believe her to say her husband divorced her. When we get to saying that her husband died, she's believed. But to say that her husband divorced her, so why could she collect until the amount of her ksuba? So now she says, If he did not divorce her, so he's obligated to feed her as a husband. If he did divorce her, he's obligated to give her the ksuba. So up until the amount of the ksuba, we allow her to collect money for, for food. So we see over here that she's coming and saying that my husband divorced me and he's out of town. We allow her to take Mizaynas when the husband is still out of town. Not like Shmuel said, that we don't allow her to take. And says the Gemara, Hachanami, Kishashama by Shemais. Over here the case is, she's saying her husband divorced her, but meanwhile we're hearing from Adam that her husband died. And therefore we allow her to take money for, for, for Mizaynas. Her husband died, then, then she could take Mizaynas. Says the Gemara, wait a minute, but if we have Adam that say that the husband died, so Maishnaat Kidei Ksubasa, so why could she only take up until the amount of the Ksuba? If the husband actually died, how much Mizainis could Aisha take? She can take Mizainis for years, much more than the Ksuba. Until she collects her Ksuba, she can get fed whatever it is. So why only till that amount? Says the Gemara, the reason is the Ihi Hi Dafsida Anafshah. 
she is the one that causes this loss for herself. The very fact that she's saying that my husband divorced me, so she's saying different than what we are hearing. We're hearing from Adim that her husband died. But she's saying my husband divorced me, so I don't deserve more than Aksuba. If a husband divorces his wife, she just gets no Mesayim, she just gets Aksuba. So because she's saying, she's, a, she's like, does Baldin Adim Domi. She's saying that my husband divorced me, so she can't take more than the value of her Aksuba. Toshima, the Gemara brings, this is, I believe, the, here, the last raya that the Gemara tries to prove uh, the, about this machlaikis here. Kate Sadomr. So this is going on. This is a price that goes on a Mishnah that we learned before in this Masechta. If you remember, we had a Mishnah that said a katana, a katana that got married, and this is not a real marriage, uh -huh. so she could refuse the marriage and walk out. So it said over there in that Mishnah that this Mima'enes gets no Mizainus, gets does not get fed from her husband. That's what the Mishnah said. So this Brayse explains what that Mishnah meant. Kate said Amru. Oh, let's see. Kate said Amru Mima'enes ain't no Mizainus. What does the Mishnah mean when it says that a Mima'enes gets no Mizainus of her husband? You can't say this refers to when she's still living with her husband. If she's still living with her husband, her husband then, even though it's only a marriage with Rabbanan, but while he's married to her, he has to feed her like every regular husband. Ella, what did that Mishnah mean when it said that Amema Enes gets no Mizoinus of her husband? The only way to explain this is, What happened is the husband went overseas. And then loves of Achla. So while he was overseas, she went and borrowed money and ate. And then the husband comes back. Now Amdo Amina, she in the in mean, meanwhile she sees her husband is not coming back, so she refuses the marriage. She gets up and walks out and refuses the marriage. And now once the husband shows back up, she says to the husband, Look, I borrowed money on your account. You have to pay me for all that money that I borrowed that you owe that you should have fed me. And for that, it says that no, he does not have to feed her. In the case of Mimanis, he does not have to feed her for what she had borrowed. No. So now says the Gemara, what do we see from this Braise? Time uh, the Mina. The reason why he's not going to have to pay up those loans that, that, that she borrowed to feed herself is because she refused the marriage. Holoi Mina, but if she had not refused the marriage and the husband showed back up and she's still married to him, even as a katana, Ya Law, we would give her. The husband would have to pay back for the money she borrowed to feed herself. So this is a question on Shmuel. Allah Shmuel, Shmuel will answer you here as well. So that this is a different story. By a katana, there's no reason why the husband shouldn't have to pay up. Why? What should we be concerned about? Are we concerned that maybe the husband left, left her a bundle of money? So a person doesn't leave a bundle of money, a bank account for a wife, which is a katana. <coughs> Are we concerned? Is the reason because maybe she has her own income? Katana le safka. Usually a katana, if she has a job, it's not, she doesn't have enough income to be able to feed herself. So therefore, in such a case, Shmuel will agree that if the husband shows back up and she was not Mimaanis in the marriage, he will have to pay her. So there's no raya against Shmuel. So the Gemara tried all these different places, sources against Shmuel, but the Gemara could not have anything it's, uh, to prove anything here. So the Gemara now concludes, My Havi Allah, what's the final Allah regarding this Machlaikis? So Kiyasar Avdimi Yama, when Avdimi came from Eretz Yisrael to Babel, he said, Maise Baal of Nei Rebbe be Beis Sha'arim. This question came in front of Rebbe that was living in Beis Sha'arim. We saw before in the Gemara it says that Rebbe's place he lived in Eretz Yisrael was in Beis Sha'arim. Upasak la Mazainis. And Rebbe said, the husband went out of town, like Rav said, we give her Mazainis. Lufnei Rabbi Shmuel with Tzipayri, such a story came in front of Rabbi Shmuel in the city Tzipayri. V'loi pasak la Mazainis. And Rabbi Shmuel said basically like Shmuel that we do not give her Mazainis. Toi about Rabbi Yechenin. Rabbi Yechenin wondered about this, about this pasak of, of Rabbi Shmuel, like Shmuel. That how could you say this? V'chimah ra Rabbi Shmuel shalei pasak la Mazainis. What did Rabbi Shmuel see? Why is he concerned that he's not giving her Mazainis? And now he brought from the first raya we brought from our Mishnah. The argument between the Bnei Kainim, Gedolim and Chanon, whether we give her food or not, whether she has to make a Shvua before she gets food. Everybody agrees that we give her Mazainis. So why is Shmuel saying that we don't give her Mazainis? But Rav Shem Baraba now says the answer the Gemara said earlier. But Shmuel already explained this in Bavel. That the Mishnah that says we give her Mizaynas is speaking about when we heard that the husband died. Amalei, Rabbi Yechelen didn't agree with this, with this answer. Pasrisu ba kula hai. You're going to make the mission, you're going to interpret the mission with such a squeeze in order to answer Shmuel's opinion, in order to answer this opinion. The mission doesn't indicate that it's speaking about that the husband died. You're putting something into the Mishnah that's not the simple shot of the Mishnah. So Rabbi Yechelen did not want to accept this. 
The Gemara now brings the same the same thing, but from Ravin in the in the uh, different version of who paskened what. Kiyasa Ravin, when Ravin came, Omar, so he said, This question came in front of Rabbi and Beisharim, whether we give the wife Mizainis when the husband went out of town, and he did not give her Mizainis. And when it came in front of Rabbi Shmuel, and Rabbi Shmuel is the one that did give Mizainis. Now, Rabbi Yechen and Sarabi Yechen wondered, Ma'ra, Rabbi Shalai Pasakla. What did Rabbi see that he did not want to give him a Zainus? The whole Nechlaku Chonon of Nekayan and Gudailam El in Yeshvua. The argument in the Mishnah is whether she has to make a Shvua or not. Avam Zainus Yavinola, everybody agrees that she does take Mizainus. Again, Amalet of Shama Barabe, Kvartigma Shmuel, but Babel Shmuel already answered in Babel and said, Kishishamu Boy Shemais, that the Mishnah is speaking about that we heard that he died. Amale, so Rabbi Yechelen responded and said, Pasrisa ba kula hai? Are you going to interpret the Mishnah with such a squeeze to answer this opinion that you don't give him a Zainus? A simple pshat of the Mishnah is that it's speaking about the husband is still alive. So the Gemara says, Vahilchase kavase de Rav. The final Allah is like Rav, Upaiskim Zainus, we do give the wife Mizainis, Laish Ish, when the husband went out of town. The Gemara here brings another two halachas that we pass in, even though it doesn't seem to be related to what we're discussing, but that some Rishayim say the reason is because these other two halachas were passed in at the same time. There's another halacha we pass in like Ravuna, the name of Rav, which was brought earlier in the Masechte. A wife could come and tell her husband, I'm not getting fed from you. And I'm not going to work and bring you any income. I'll take care of myself. So we pass in that she has the right to say this. Another halacha, we pass in like Zvid, regarding Kunya. Kunya is regarding you have an earthenware vessel which is glazed over with some kind of a glaze, some kind of a covering. This is a, a question that comes up when you have a vessel that's bought, brought, bought from a guy and you have to table it, or maybe even you have to kasher it, if the guy used non-kosher food in it, or even he may have uh, used the ayin nesach in it, as Rashi brings, or another scenario could be regarding kashering uh, the kalim that you use all year round to be used for Pesach, so, it, because usually a keli absorbs, the walls of the keli absorb from the non-kosher food or from the chametz food and you have to cash it. So there's a, there's a question about kunya. The Amr of Zvid, Rav Zvid said, Hani, money, the kunya, these kalim of kunya. So again, these are earthenware vessels that have some kind of a lead covering on it. Glazed. Again? Glazed. Glazed, right, it's glazed. So, chivri vochmi, if it's white or black glazed, Shadu. So it's allowed because we know that this white or black glaze does not allow any, any absorb, absorption. Of this. So therefore, it can be used without cashing it. But Yeruki, if it's a green glaze, so then that's made from a different material. Asiri, it's not allowed because it does have something else in it. Rashi says, alum has in it something that uh, will absorb. So you have to cash it. But the Gemara adds, Veloya Maran, this that we said before, that if it has a white or black lace, you don't have to cash it, it's only the Ella de Lesbe Kartufni, only if it does not have cracks in it. Avalizbuhu Kartufni, but if it has cracks in it, so then it will absorb, and a CD, it'll be a, and I won't be allowed to use unless you cash it.